Join good friend and author of Supercharged Self-Healing, RJ Spina, as he shares with us a process he used to connect to sentience, which ultimately paved the way for him to heal from permanent chest down paralysis. RJ has a beautiful way of simplifying complex topics and making them very user-friendly. This is an episode that you will not want to miss. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our show as we continue on with our series on Know Thyself. I'm going to jump for the most part right into our episode very quickly because I think this is an episode that has so many important pieces that you'll want to pay attention to. But we've interviewed RJ several times in the past and we've really really value his insights and his wisdom that he shares and we will have his insights in many more series to come so we're going to jump right into this but as you know rj healed himself from permanent chest down paralysis and he shares part of the strategy on how he did that and what he needed to connect to that ultimately unlocked his natural ability to heal this episode is packed with so much user-friendly information and doable steps that you can begin today. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into our conversation with RJ. Make sure to share, like, and follow and subscribe. Thank you so much for your support, and we will talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. So when you've discovered yourself and then you give that, you imbue this realm mm -hmm. with your love, your wisdom, your talents and abilities, it raises the frequency of everyone. And now you have a, a joyous life. Uh, but th this is, it's this know thyself, this is it. There is no other directive. It's the only one that exists. It's the only true directive. Know thyself. Every piece of existence has this embedded within itself. Know yourself, know thyself, explore yourself, understand yourself and all your infinite potential. And so by asking the right questions, we start to understand who we really are and then how to go about this process. So maybe I can ramble. Well, I just did, but maybe I can ramble a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think, RJ, when in regards to then for people to contemplate that question, know thyself, because that by itself is, is kind of a, a large lofty concept for people yeah. to even kind of know where to begin. So we've often found questions help us to, you know, narrow in a little bit on on concepts and sort of you know from something so big to bring it a little bit more focused so from that point of view then from your point of view what would be some questions that you would offer people to contemplate and uh, help them arrive at a deeper understanding of who they are yeah yeah jason i, I think the single most important question that we ever ask ourselves is literally who am i this this just the act of this questioning will reveal more than people can possibly imagine by simply doing the self-inquiry of asking, asking yourself, who am I? And when we do ask ourselves that question, the mind literally goes blank. There's no answer. That's because the truth of the matter is our temporary individualization is just that. It's very temporary. So in essence, there really isn't a separate who. And then when you question the mind about who am I, it literally doesn't have an answer. Because the truth of the matter is, it's all one thing. We are all creations within a creation. And this is just a temporary experience of individualization. And so the who, when you question the who, it disappears because ultimately it's not authentic. The who we think we are and how we feel about ourselves is simply a temporary condition based upon experiencing individuation within a low frequency environment. So by asking yourself, who am I? The character disappears, the human character literally disappears like magic and there's no one there. Now, what starts to happen when we do that, if we do it as I'm just rambling about it, who am I? Now, what will start to happen when people do this is that they'll actually start to just feel something right here in the center of the chest, a presence, a, a warmth, a, a, a beingness, if you will. And the mind is empty. Who am I? But you feel this right here. This is what you are. It's not a who, 
This is what you are. And what you are is a fractal of God. It is love. It is wisdom. And the subset of all those things are, are called our talents and abilities. And if you want to get in touch to know yourself, to know who and what you are, the most profound question that will, will, that will reveal the greatest illumination is the simplest question of all. Who am I? Now, metaphysically, what happens when we ask that question, and I know our, our physical senses can't perceive this, but our higher mind can perceive this. When we ask ourselves, who am I? What happens is the energy that was circulating in your head begins to drop down and it returns to its source point within you. And so the mind goes blank and the emotions become completely stable because all the energy is returning to its source point within you. And the energy source point is just beneath the belly button and above the groin. So hence you get complete mental clarity and total emotional stability through self-inquiry to know yourself by simply asking yourself, who am I? Then what will remain is a presence, is a sensation, the beingness. Now this is what you really are and what you really are sits right here between your heart and your spine. And this is why everyone indicates themselves. They don't point to their head and say me. They point to the center of their chest and say me. Because this is what you are. It sits right here. And it is not a who. It is a what. It is love. It is wisdom. It is forgiveness. It is compassion. And it is all the other talents and abilities that we display. This is where all morals and ethics and character comes from. It's you. You're born with it. It's what you are. There is no who. So that is the first question. And in a lot of ways, the most profound question we can ever ask ourselves in order to know ourselves is to ask ourselves, who am I? And you'll realize that you are beyond all roles, concepts, beliefs, and ideologies. If you added them all together, every concept, every belief, ide every ideology, if you added them all together, it wouldn't amount to one you. You're beyond all of it all of it. So don't reduce yourself to any of those things. And I would say maybe the next question that we could ask in order to know thyself is what is it that I'm trying to achieve? Once you ask yourself, who am I? And there's no answer. And you sit within thyself and you start to experience directly body-mind, direct connection with the self, then maybe what you want to do at some point is, well, what is it that I am trying to achieve? What is it that I want to achieve? Now, it's important to ask that question second, because if you ask that question first, your programmed subconscious mind or your ego mind identity will give you an answer in terms of what you want to achieve. Oh, I want to make money. Oh, I want to have a family. Or I want to have a house or, I want, or, or whatever. That's programming. That's all that is. So the first question to know yourself is ask yourself, who am I? Get used to being you again. Sit with that. And then when you're ready, when you're ready, ask yourself, what is it that I'm trying to achieve? And let the answer come from here and let it imbue your mind. The answer should come from here, like a flower opening, and then it wafts up to your mental body. And then you'll be able to understand intellectually what it is that you're trying to achieve. But work that way, not from mind first, right? Get rid of the mind, who am I? Reside as the self, then ask the self, what is it that I'm trying to achieve? And without realizing it, we will put ourselves right onto our life plan. It's like we get asked all the time, how do I, how do I know I'm, I'm supposed to be doing this? Is this right for me? Am I on my life, like my, my life plan? How do I know if I'm on my life plan? How do I know if I'm following through? Ask yourself those two questions. That's how you do it. To know thyself, who am I? And to make sure that you're on your life plan, once you are yourself again, what is it that I'm trying to achieve? And let that waft up.
Don't reach for it. Don't even analyze it. Ask the question and let the perfume of the self emanate. And you will get a, a gigantic inhale of the essence of yourself. And then your mind will be able to know what it is that you're actually trying to achieve. And once the finite mind or rational mind or the intellect understands what it is it can do, we can then go from thought, emotion, action, and behavior, which is part of the, the subset of the order of creation. And then we can start to proceed to, to create and envision and manifest what it is that we're trying to achieve. Did, did that make any sense? That just simplified things so much. RJ? RJ, I, I, so, yeah. I so love our conversations. And um, <laughs> it's like I said to you even before mm -hmm. we started this interview, it's like you have a way of bringing things about that just simplifies things. And like you said, the truth is simple. So if it gets to be too complicated, then we maybe need to pull back again and find something more simple. So I, I love that. And really, it's like, I, I love the part of it was a question that also required the person to actually get back in touch with themselves and feel something to then ask the second question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's why, I mean, if we start off with what is it that I'm trying to achieve, it, it'll just be your program mm -hmm. talking. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't even realize that. It's subconscious, it's not in the conscious mind. All of a sudden, well, I want to make money. I want to have a house. I want to get married. I want to have kids. I want. That's just programming. That's, that's programming. Let, let's go to the real you. And what does the real you, what did the real you design uh, life plan? What did it design to experience in this life? But it's definitely in that order. And, and yes, Jason, the, the truth is simple. And if it's not, I, the way to look at that is uh, that self-mastery. So when it's simple, it's self-mastery. You've mastered yourself. There's no complications. There's no doubt. There's no trying to figure it out. There's no, well, 45 minutes do this for 40. This is nonsense. So self-mastery is immediate and it's tangible. It's immediate and it's tangible, period. And if it's not immediate and tangible, it's not self-mastery. It might be someone on the way, for sure. Absolutely, it might be someone on the way, but it's not self-mastery. It would be immediate, it would be tangible, it would be effective. There'd be no questions. You just do it, you're like, oh my God, what a difference. Right, this is mastering complete dominion over the, over the mind-body complex. And self-healing, for what it's worth, real self-healing is, uh, is uh, obviously it's an, it's an attribute of total self-mastery to be able to put your body back together. And there are, there are beings that can, can do this, have done this, and will continue to do it. It's, uh, it's not completely unique. It's not um, pervasive yet, but yeah, absolutely. There are beings that understand this. I'm just one of them. And so this is how you do it. It's easy, right? When you command the mind body, where are the limitations? Where are they? There aren't any. We create them. There are no limitations. It's one thing. It's all connected. It's one thing. What limitation? What block? Where is it? You literally have to create it. Opposites exist, but there's no opposition. Where? Where is it? This is what self-realization will give everyone. This tangible understanding won't just be some weirdo talking about it. It'll be, it'll be tangible. It'll be like, oh, you know, not only do I understand what he's talking about, I, I, I feel it and I can do it too. That's right. That's right. What are you waiting for? <laughs> right? Now you've got permission to do it. And now you've got the, the handbook, textbooks, and you're going to get more of them. This is how you do it. It's easy. It's easy. And if it's complicated, stop. Stop. Just stop. It's some mental machination. It's, not, it's, it's beneath you. Don't bother. And those two questions, they might be the two most important questions we ever ask ourselves. You might not need to ask yourself any other questions. Ever. Literally. Once you've gotten rid of the programming, who am I? Now you're back to yourself. What is it that I'm trying to achieve? 
Let the life plan take over. You already mapped it out. The universe has got it all lined up for you. All you got to do is put one step in front of the other. It's all mapped out. All the people you're supposed to meet, all the experiences that you're going to have. It's all mapped out. It's a movie script. It's already been written. You wrote it, right? Just get, get back on cue. Get the script back in your hand, right? Because everyone's waiting for you. This whole thing is a movie set for you. Step back out on stage and know your lines. And then each scene can happen. And then the next scene happens. And then the next scene happens. And it flows. All of a sudden, oh, wow, that was an interesting movie. And we'll call that a life. <laughs> but, you know, until we're back in tune with this, it's a, because none of it's been mapped out. The people you're supposed to meet and the experiences you're supposed to have, you're on the wrong track. You're supposed to be going to California. You're headed to Idaho. What are you doing? Everyone's waiting for you on this path over here, on this train. You got on the wrong train. Going the wrong way. It's all going to blow up because you're not supposed to go that way. Oh, why is my life falling apart? Why don't my relationships suck? Why can't I make any money? You're not supposed to be doing that stuff. That's why. <laughs> That's why. And your guides and helpers are the ones that are blowing it up, by the way. And because they got your life plan. <laughs> So they blow it up. And it's your guides and helpers that turn your body off. When it's time to get out of here, when it's time to slide out, they're the ones that turn it off. <laughs> it's this, how things are here is the opposite of how things really are. And it's because we're not taught these things. And we're not taught properly so we can experience these things for ourselves. It's one thing to hear some wacko talk about it, but it's another thing to then to actually start to do some of these things and then start to experience some of these things. And that's really where we're at, experiential wisdom, right? We're past belief systems. It's now experiential. So these teachings are how to do everything and experience everything experientially. And that's why they're worth their weight in gold, because that's exactly where the consciousness is at, to do this experientially, individually, for ourselves. We can do it. We're ready. When Yogananda was here, it took people 40 minutes to put their body in all sorts of Kriya Yoga, to put their body in all these different formations just to get themselves ready to meditate. Because the base frequencies of, of humanity were much lower. So we had to go through physicality, manipulation of the body. So we had to go through this physicality in order to get ourselves just in position to be able to meditate. The base frequencies of the planet are much higher now. So we don't need to do any of that stuff. And that's why I don't teach yoga. So that's why I teach instantaneous meditation. Now I teach people to meditate like that because everyone's ready to. It's the only reason why I'm allowed to teach this because everyone's not ready to work in that way. And that's why Yogananda taught Kriya Yoga because that's as far as he was allowed to take it. He could have taught anything, but that's as far as he was allowed to take it because that's where the base frequencies of humanity was at. He had to go through the body, had to go through the physicality. Now we don't need to do any of that instantaneous connection, instantaneous meditation, self-healing. We're at a whole nother level. We're at a whole nother level. All we have to do is avail ourselves of it. It's, it's here now. It's here right now. People just have to know about it, avail themselves of it, and dedicate themselves to it. That's it. And it does take dedication. Absolute dedication. Just snap your finger and everything is in your own and you're enlightened and you've healed yourself, this is nonsense. This is nonsense. This takes dedication, devotion, intense concentration, unwavering will, right? So it's not just Merlin waving his magic wand. There's a lot of dedication that goes into being able to wave your magic wand and do magic. Countless, countless hours, years, lifetimes of dedication, focus unrelenting attention on God. And then all of a sudden it becomes easy. <laughs> but it takes dedicate, you know, it's like the 10-year the, the overnight success. It's like, oh, someone's instantly popular. That, that dude's been working at it for 10 years. You just now heard about it. So same idea, right? Mm -hmm. Dedication focus. The, the reward is being able to dedicate yourself to something, to something greater. Right? The love and wisdom within your heart and to be able to help everyone with it by accessing it within you. Dedication, dedication, dedication. It's everything. It's everything. And I have to go. Last thing, someone asked me the other day, 
RJ, what are the, what are the most important things to work on? So what, what do you mean? What are the most important things to work on? What are the top 10 things that like, what should I work on right now? The number one thing that you think is most important that I need to work on to be able to realize myself, have the best possible lifetime, awaken myself, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He's like, what are the top 10? I don't know. I'm not sure. I never thought of it. I don't know. I let, me, I let me literally connect with it. I have no idea. So I did. And this is what I thought was interesting. <clears throat> so I made a top 10 list. <laughs> top 25. Just, so I made a top 10 list. I wrote it down. And as I was getting to like number four, number five, whatever, I was like, uh, you know, these are all interchangeable. I can't feel one that is more important, uh, which is kind of subjective, but what is more important once I got to like four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, So I was like, Oh, I'm not really sure. I'm just going to write them down. So I'm like, okay. The next morning I woke up and said, let me do another one. So I did another top 10 list and all those four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, 10 all switched order. <laughs> so I was like, okay, that's kind of what I suspected. Okay. So I'm going to do it one more time. So the next day I did it one more time. Same thing again. But what's most interesting about it is number one and number two never changed. Each time I did it, number one and number two never changed. Number one is detachment. Detachment is number one because nothing happens that is quote unquote good until you detach from what's here, including your own mind body. Detachment gives you your energy back and it allows you to actually experience yourself directly. You're no longer attached to thoughts, emotions, body, bodily sensations, beliefs, ideologies. So detachment is the single, from my perspective, detachment is the single most important thing for everyone to work on because that's the starting line. You have to become detached, number one. And number two, the will. The will. We use our will for everything. Our energy is our will. I mean, that's what we harness right? To move our body, to think, to emote, to, to do anything, right? We use energy. Our energy is our will. So it's used for everything, not just in this incarnation, forever, you know, forever and ever and ever and ever. Okay. So those are one and two, without a doubt. And then I found three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, eh, put them whatever order you want, so to speak. It wound up being, there was only 12 different things to doing it three different times. I essentially came back to almost the same 10 things every single time, which is probably telling in that sense, but there wound up being 12. And maybe if I really focused on it, I would probably be able to eliminate and really say, okay, these are the top 10, but I know for sure what's one and two without question, detachment, and then the will. And then you can start to access love, wisdom, power, compassion, forgiveness, courage, grace, sense of humor, which is in there, by the way. So for whatever it's worth, detachment and learning how to harness your will, I think that will yield the greatest results for humanity. To understand how to become detached so you can actually be yourself and how to harness your body of energy properly. So you can achieve, what is it that I'm trying to achieve? So you can achieve what it is that you set out to do in this lifetime and every lifetime, whatever it is. Returning to yourself and then understanding what your life plan is by asking yourself, what is it that I'm trying to achieve? And then harnessing your will to do it. That's it. And sense of humor I had is four. Interesting. Now that just me might be because I'm crazy, but... I found sense of humor to be super important, yeah. super, super, super important. And there's a whole conversation I had with God that'll be in one of these books about that, about sense of humor and how important it is and why God created it. <laughs> it was a very interesting conversation. So I love to joke around all the, t really all the time. I like to joke yeah. around and I finally understood why. Like when I had this conversation with God, because I, I even have a hard time being serious. I'm incredibly determined and passionate, but I have a hard time being serious about anything. I, I just find everything funny. I don't know why. I, when you lose your mind, maybe you just find everything funny. But God made it quite clear why, why, that's, why that's so important. 
sense of humor. It's number four for me. Mm -hmm. All right, I should shut. I should. We're, we're going to have to expand on that. I want to. I mm -hmm. want to go through that list with you another mm -hmm. time. Um, I I totally agree though with sense of humor. I've I've also found personally like sense of humor is such a powerful way to change context of situations like that. So you can kind of switch out of something you might get stuck in very fast. So um, I, I think um, I think it's a really powerful tool for for everybody to cultivate. That is very similar to what God said, by the way. Hmm. That's very similar to what God said. It's, it, it's, it's a way to shake loose and to shake hmm. you free of what was holding you up and what you, seen, what you thought was so important. To be able to see the flip side of that, which is the irony, and to be able to experience joy through that, which we call humor. So I was like, oh my God, that's fascinating. And he goes, he, speaking to me, he's like, your ability to see the flip side of everything almost concurrently as you're seeing the front you're seeing the back because mm -hmm. right, i've lost my mind right so i see the front and the back at the same time i'm seeing something so i just find everything funny and god god said exactly right you're seeing through everything and you, it is amusing that you're able to see through everything and you see the juxtaposition of the hang up of people on the front and the hang up of people on the back and you see right through it so you find the whole thing funny <laughs> So I was like, yeah, I do. The whole thing is funny. And he goes, he goes, it's funny to me as well. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, th this is why God invented humor. Uh, I think, I think it's fabulous, RJ. And that'll leave everybody with some really important questions to chew on there for mm -hmm. a little bit. So I'm excited to hear what people come up with and uh, to let us know back some of the answers that maybe they get in some I also, of the direction. I also thought that maybe for, for this series um, specifically, uh, because we're leaving it pretty open for the, for the guests to have the platform and share their questions, if um, guests have any specific questions as far as the specific details of things that come up for them, we'll do, we'll do a round table and have, oh, wow. uh, have guests uh, return if you're okay with that. And yeah, then yeah. Uh, people can pop up uh, online and ask their questions live. Yeah, I, I look forward to it. I think it'd be very interesting for people to not just get mm -hmm. my insane point of view, to get other points of view, because this is just a perspective. That's all it is, right? It's a perspective. It's an unusual mm -hmm. one. It's an advanced one, but it's a perspective. So uh, RJ and, and is not for everyone, right? So I think it's really important that you do stuff like that, that you get this person's perspective, this person's perspective, this person's perspective, and then throw in my insane one in there. And it might even help tie some things together. You know, one man's, you know, scintillating lecturer is another man's boring professor, <laughs> you know? So uh, I think it's a good idea to do a round table and it's not just what I say or just what, you know, Dr. Goswami says, or just what Julio says, or just what, you know, whoever it's not, yeah. you know, it's a perspective, uh, you know, there are interesting ones and it's, I like to see where they all connect me, like, to me, me that mm -hmm. that's what yeah. it, like, that's what I'm interested in. It's like, where do these things start to intersect? Yeah. It's like, Oh, now we're getting somewhere mm -hmm. because, you know, Dr. Goswami may be able to, you know, say all this stuff. And then RJ says all this stuff, but, oh man, look at the common threads right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're actually talking about the same thing. Dr. Goswami came upon it the way he did it. RJ came upon it the way he did it. But look at the connection there. Yeah. So to, to me, that, that's the beauty from my perspective. That's the beauty of the round table. Yeah. Is, is to see the slightly divergent understandings but then to see where they overlap and it's, it's where they overlap is where I, I would be really interesting in interested in going further with that yeah. for sure is to see that where, where are those neurons connecting? Right? Yeah. This, this That's is where I find this is, this has been a really part of the key for us with doing series is mm -hmm. I like to get different perspectives, but what I always find most important is where do you see the common threads? Because that's where I think you hit the real essence of the truths coming through because they're all intertwining somewhere. And my intention for, for viewers is that when they can watch these different things, they'll, they can pick lots of different pieces, but they will start to see some commonalities. And I think those are the, those commonalities are where the rubber meets the road. I, I really think that's the parts that we got to like, okay, that's a, 
There's something really juicy and important about that bit. So that's where we can kind of take that home. And, and a lot of times I find the guests say things that do overlap. They just might say it in different ways, might appeal yeah. to different perspectives, but which is important, but you'll kind of find those common threads. So yeah, the round table will, will organize a round table for this specific series and, uh, would love to have you a part of that too. And I think that'll be a really fabulous conversation. So people are there, start to prep your questions and do your homework on this one. And let's see how that goes. Yeah, I think the importance of just re-watching these videos and just really maybe closing your eyes and just letting it sink in, letting it speak to your heart um, and then contemplating it from that place. It's like RJ said, uh, starting from the place of who am I? and then letting these uh, contemplative practices really speak to the essence of who you are from that place and, and see how that then transforms your life. And um, yeah, we're really excited for these talks and we really hope that they start to ripple out um, from the individuals who are listening in, who are tuning in outward to the whole entire world. It, they're much needed. So thank you mm -hmm. so much, RJ, for your participation. Always grateful. Always grateful. My, my pleasure. Thank you very much.